This week, super coach himself, Clint Hill's in the house. We're going to discuss, can you see yourself running your own personal training business or improving fitness for others, mate? Like, where's the trends heading? Mate, I love this topic and uh, really happy to be here and uh, discussing this one with you. Let's rip in. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. Today's podcast is brought to you by Hydroxyburn Shred Ultra, nootropic thermogenic. Shred Ultra is scientifically engineered to shred body fat, ignite metabolism, and boost all-day energy while enhancing cognitive performance, focus, clarity, and mood. It combines powerful fat-burning thermogenics, Garcinia, green coffee bean, guarana, caffeine, and an industry-leading four grams of acetyl L-carnitine with potent nootropic ingredients at effective therapeutic doses to give you maximum results. Welcome to the house of Fit, Happy, and Healthy Body Science. Today, we're going to talk about aspiring personal trainers, fitness professionals, people looking to advance their training abilities, increase client databases, increase knowledge, all that type of thing to do with a PT. And why are people becoming PTs, mate? With me, Clint Hill, how are you, man? Mate, I'm really well. And yourself? Good. You've been a busy boy too. You've been doing all types of conferences and running around the world, I hear. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It's uh, an amazing opportunity. And uh, just recently here on the Gold Coast with the ASCA, so it's been a fantastic uh, opportunity for myself. I had two two lectures there, programming and periodization, followed by recovery. Nice. Big topics too. Yeah, it was great. And and I guess the other thing is, you know, it, it's also a great opportunity for me to touch base with a lot of coaches that I don't see on a regular basis, keep upskilling and, and learning new things and seeing where the trends are in the industry, mate. Perfect. So, mate, let's get to the crux of this. People doing their Cert 3s and Cert 4 in fitness, are they doing it for themselves these days or are they doing it to train one-on-one? Yeah, look, it's an interesting one. Um, so, the, the current stats show that about half of the people that read Register to do the course, never use it. And of the half that do- That would be me. Yes, that would be you, mate, <laughs> yeah. as we just discussed prior to <laughs> prior to the podcast. Also, that half of the people that sit down and actually start PT are out of the industry within six months. And are they heading into sport or they're just out of it completely? <laughs> no, look, I mean, it's, it's obviously a highly competitive industry, but one of the biggest things is the support, the mentorship, and also just making sure that you actually have someone there to show you the ropes when times get tough. Yeah, it's a tough gig those early days young PTs. Absolutely. Yeah, especially the way a lot of gyms work these days too, you know, as you've got your first in, first out yeah. concept, you've yep. got your... And, and look, I mean, we, we discussed, um, there, was a, there was a lot of gym owners there over the over the course of the conference and uh, a, a lot of them were asking, you know, how to make the industry better. You know, the big question at the moment is, what can I do? What can I do on a daily basis? And and Fitness Australia are trying to do something really clever, which is about time that they do this and I, and I will be critical because I've, I've spoken outwardly to them about how to make it better because currently people aren't joining <coughs> Fitness Australia because they don't need to. They yeah. don't actually get anything from it. They yeah. might as well just go and do their uh, level one CrossFit or their level one strength and conditioning, get their registration and insurance and away they go. So Fitness Australia have realized that this is a big issue for them. It's also meaning that the commercial facilities are finding it much more difficult to get qualified trainers. There's, there's obviously a huge push to advance education, whether it's formally or, or non-formally by, uh, you know, uh, social media or by, via uh, online courses and those kind of things, but it's just about really connecting with people and, and guiding them down the right way. And you mentioned a stat to me before we started that what sixty one percent of the industry is qualified these days. Yeah, correct. Back in the back in the day, uh, I, the first stat I remember ever seeing was that seventy five percent weren't yeah. qualified. Now what that means is that 75% doesn't have a Cert 3, Cert 4 at minimum. Mm -hmm. So somebody may have a level one CrossFit and, and own a CrossFit gym, yeah. okay? And that's fine. That's current industry standard. That's okay. That doesn't make it right. So I guess the the big thing for me there is going to be uh, helping helping guide the industry to to make sure we're we're pumping out more qualified trainers, but also a understanding of what needs to come next, how they continue their education. And and another stat that I gave you offline was three point five percent of trainers are up regularly upskilling. That's it. You know that's that's a pretty atrocious number when you look at it. Three point five. Yep. Yeah, that's um, that's not changing the world, is it? That is not changing the world, and it's definitely not increasing our industry. So, mate, what what does the industry need to do to work together better? Look, it's, that's an excellent question. One that was posed a couple of months ago in a symposium that I was involved with was how do we how do we make this better? What's mm -hmm. the process? What do we do first? You know, and everyone always says, "What's the first step?" Right? You know, and the first step's the hardest. 
What Fitness Australia's attempt to do is get more gyms in line. Now, the proposal uh, that has been discussed is that the current insurance model becomes more expensive for people who are not qualified Cert 3, Cert 4 and less expensive for people who have Cert 3, Cert 4. Now, if you've so got- So what an, type of people are training in a gym that don't have Cert 3 and Cert 4? Well, though? look, uh, it's an interesting one to say that. You can have your level one CrossFit. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's or, back, yeah. Yes, it's, or your level one strength and conditioning and actually- still technically train someone in a gym with insurance, but there are definitely still some people out there that- uh, So are, who insures CrossFit gyms? Uh, so same same organization. They just have a very different criteria and chance of being sued increases dramatically when you don't have that minimum Cert 3, Cert 4. So, and I'm not having to go at CrossFit here because I, I love the sport, but so to become a CrossFit accredited, you train through the CrossFit organization? Yes. So you're not really working with Fitness Australia at any no. stage through this? You no. just come to them for CrossFit, insurance CrossFit is actually- Actually, well, no, you don't even go through Fitness Australia at all. So CrossFit okay. uh, and the Australian Strength and Conditioning Association or the UK Strength and Conditioning Association, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the insurance goes through a, a normal insurance company. There are several different options there and some of which, you know, let's say Marsh Insurance, for example, you can be a CrossFitter, you can be a Strength and Conditioning Coach and go through Marsh or you can be a Cert 3, Cert 4 trainer working at Fitness First or, you know, AMF or whatever and and go that path as well. Nice to drop a few guys. Coast gyms there, yeah, mate. why not? Right, I've got to make it. Got to make it local. Any others you want to drop while you're here? <laughs> ACTV. <laughs> <laughs> Caught up with a few of the boys while I've been up here, so it's been uh, it's been nice to uh, to touch base with a few and uh, and just have a bit of time with some good quality people. So, man, if I'm a young trainer and I want to get into that, like Taj, my son, for example, sure. wants to, wants to be, become a trainer. He's yep. working F45 now. Uh, he has got a Cert three in group training or yep. something when yep. he was at school. Yep, with a diploma of business and a whole yep. lot of other stuff. So he he can train a class, but he can't train a person one on one. Yeah, correct. Which to so. me, I think is I'll just put it out there fucked. Like yeah, that yeah. doesn't make sense. That yep. he can look after thirty people, but he can't look can't after, after one. one. Yeah. Where does this all come together, and how do you make this work? How do you get CrossFit to talk with your functional centres to talk with your traditional gym and have a unified training uh, level of skill? Like, I, I guess you know this is a it's it's a monumental question, and yep. and if we could rewind twenty five years, we could start it from from scratch and really get this sorted properly. That's not going to happen clearly and uh, there needs to be some type of amnesty or something along those lines whereby people can submit their qualifications get them transferred over and and you know things things can be ticked off or whatever so the draw case a line in the sand. yeah draw a line in the stand and, and go from there I remember somebody saying many years ago that if if we had the opportunity to start again there would only be one association now fitness Australia should be that association but unfortunately they're not um, What's the background on Fitness Australia? What are they? Unfortunately, it's a privately owned company, but they're- Okay, they're that's not going to help. No, it's not going to help. It? That's right. Um, great name though. Great name. Well yeah. played. Had me filled. Well played. <laughs> the thing that they originally had on their side is everyone wanted to be part of that organization because to go to Filex, to go to you know the Australian Fitness Show, as it's now called, yep. you had to be part of- but then they fast realized that there was no money to be made from just us- utilizing those gyms. So, you know, coming back to what you're talking about with, with Taj and, and so on and so forth. Now, we're just using Taj as an yep. example because we can. But Look, that- he's straight out of school. He wouldn't have had a Cert 4 by now no, anyway if he course. started. So. Yeah, of course. But he loves the industry, mate. He's into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. And and what, what should and will occur- He's been able to do your course every day too, just quietly. Let's <laughs> <laughs> like talk about that at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's only double for you. Yeah. Um, so, but- Basically, uh, the the whole concept around how that sort of should work is that everyone should go through and do their Cert 3, Cert 4. And the reason that there is Cert 3 and Cert 4 to start with is because they're saying that group training is written by someone else. So, a higher level instructor writes the program. You're just there to carry it out. Okay. So, the old Cert 3 enabled you to do classes, teach, uh, you know, step aerobics and and all of these wonderful things. Under guidance that, of someone. Under guidance, yeah. basically. Right? Which is a great model when you think about it. 100%. And then obviously people realized that they no longer needed their Cert 3, Cert 4 to work in a private gym or a boutique studio or whatever wonderful little adjectives you'd like to add into there. Realistically, the, the concept behind what we're looking towards is that qualification needs to mean something. Yep. And at the moment, it really does. Okay. You know, some of the guys that I've come across over the years who, who don't have a Cert 3, Cert 4 are some of the best coaches oh, I've seen. Yeah. So there needs to be that crossover point you know there needs to be that opportunity and I, I remember there was a debate on channel nine many years ago and ronnie palmer 
was was on. Yeah, we all know I've I've got a soft spot for for Ronnie. He's uh, one of the Good one man, of the best Ronnie. SNCs that's uh, that's ever ever been in the industry. And and again, he he made the crossover from school teacher to strength and conditioning coach. And he needed the amnesty from from the school teaching, from the PE coaching or the PE teaching over to coaching. So he was he was not gifted it in any way, shape or form. He'd done the yards, he'd done the work and he, he was brilliant at what he did. So he then went into that and then got the qualifications that way. Now, if the same thing were to apply in the PT world, we would have a series of much better qualified coaches. There would be much less risk. And at the moment, there's several cases against F45 and uh, and you know other boutique style group training areas around injury mm. um, and I'm not singling out f45 in any way we were just talking about it through through touch I actually really like f45 and I think there's a oh, there's mate, definitely a lot of people a place. Love, train there love it absolutely yeah. you know yeah. there's a place for everything and yeah. this is the thing that I keep saying yeah everyone's got to work together yeah and and we've got to stop bagging the industry too you know like I, I I made the comment the other day that there should be no difference between a male and female there should be no difference between group fitness and and one-on-one but the other part of this is you're allowed to do what you want to do. Do you think it starts with a, an earlier cert than a three and four? Do you think it, to make the entry, like to make that entry in like a level one, level two, level three, level four, and so you've got the even the pay structures around the industry would work accordingly? Well, th- that's another really interesting <clears throat> one. You know, I, I think I think that um, you know if if you look at how things are going, there's a there's an option within high schools to do a, a level O, okay, and you can do the same thing with strength and conditioning. The the level O is like a here, learn. Okay, now you can't do anything with it, but it puts you in that understanding mode of what is going to happen next. Yep. Where are you at? These are the things you're going to need to know about. If if you're missing this, it fills that gap. And I think that's really important. But as you said, one of the things that Fitness First tried to do many years ago when I was still involved with them was they tried to actually say, okay, if you're a level one trainer, this is what you're worth. If you're a level two trainer, this is what you're worth. If you're a level three, this is what you're worth. But as each of those guys were running their own businesses, the guys who were level threes, you know, maybe even level twos would charge whatever they wanted. If they were gifted the gab salesman, they could uh, they could make sure that occurred. Yeah, I think um, that the guidelines around what that pay structure should be definitely is is a big thing. And I think that you know, if we're going to look to professionalise the industry, there just needs to be a lot more legitimacy around that, and and obviously transparency too. Because I certainly see it a, a lot in in a lot of the people that I'm mentoring. You know, I've just uh, I've just started speaking with a with a young girl. She's just 22 years old. She's just won her first. She's just won her pro card IFBB. Wonderful, wonderful human. Really, really lovely girl. She finished a cert four six weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, because of what she's won, she's going to be able to charge much more because people are going to go look at that booty and so on and yeah. so forth. This is this is someone she's I want to work. She's doing, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Legitimately, she followed a coach's structure and guidelines the whole way through. She doesn't know much. She's a great kid. Yeah, she's got a long way to go. So I think it's definitely you know not just the uh, the education, but it's also the experience. Yeah. Okay. And when it comes to experience, you don't need any experience to get your cert three, cert four. You're pretty much on on the ground, ready to go. As long as you can pay the bill, buddy. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Mm, yeah. So there's no time on. No, no time on tools prior to, and you know, as we've spoken off off air and and for for many years, you know, I've just put the time in and written a cert three, cert four because I my concern is that the the standard was not high enough. And Fitness Australia, interestingly enough, said that there's too much content in my Cert 3, Cert 4, which is also a bit of a giggle. I'm only allowed to assess for 30% of what I've written in the course. Is that right? So technically, if they did 30% of the course, they get the qualification. I'm gifting them 70% for uh, hopefully to increase knowledge. Don't really know what to say about that. (laughs) I don't know whether I'm stupid or they are. I'm not quite sure on which part yet, to be honest. That is interesting though, isn't Mm. it? Yeah, so you're only allowed to assess on a on a certain criteria, and that's the let's let's call it 10, 10 modules, right? Mm-hmm. So what I've done is I've written more content for each one of those modules, but they're not allowed to be assessed on it. So there's thirty percent they're allowed to be assessed on. There's an additional seventy percent, almost seventy percent in each model module, but overall seventy percent based on how to be a better trainer. Okay. How long does it take to get a cert for these days? Look, you can choose the cheapest, crappiest. Uh, bottom of the barrel, bare minimum standard, and have it done in 10 weeks. 10 weeks, okay. 10 weeks. Start to finish. Yep, start to finish. Okay, and that's your three and your four. Yep. Okay. And what, what's 
TAFE is still in Cert 3, Cert 4? TAFE is still Cert 3, Cert 4. How long are they taking? Months. Well, that's a big difference in big education difference, yeah. platform. Yep. And mine, uh, the, so as, as part of the criteria, you have to have a certain number of people go through and sit it yep. to, to give them a rough idea of how long that takes. I had 27% that did the whole course, right? So, and what I mean by that is, as I said, 70% more content. So they did the whole course. Yep. It took them between 23 and 28 weeks. Okay. The guys who did the bare minimum, because I, I set it up that way, by the yep. way, so that I could see exactly how long it took someone else. Because obviously the time that it takes me to do it, because I know the content is, is slightly different, yeah. was about 16 weeks. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. But the other part of mine is because it comes with a manual that they can hang on to, they have something to refer to later on. Yeah. And because mine also comes with a 12-month mentorship, it means I talk about those things each week in the mentorship so they can then go back and refer to that when they don't know it or, or want to continue their education. That's good. Not many people are offering that no service, one. are they? Yeah. And that's that's my point of difference. And mate, where do you PT? You've walked out with your Cert 3, Cert 4. Where PTs do they go to get- That's a that's a cracker because, uh, you know- I mean, Obviously, you've got your peers in the gym you can talk to. Of course, to. of course. Um, but from an education perspective, CC? Yep. Well, so there, there we go again. So, you know, we're, it's it's which way around are you going to go, right? So you can go externally and find a mentor. As I said before, only 3.5% of people are actually doing regular upskills, which means <coughs> courses, right? Yeah, running a business and being a good PT are- Very different things. And, but very correlated but to each other. But also very correlated. Right. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it, there are some people out there that are brilliant business people yep. and terrible PTs and yep. still run a successful business. Yep. There are some people out there- Why that are you looking brilliant at me? PTs. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I just, it just happens that you're across the table. Um, but there are, there are also plenty of people out there that are brilliant PTs that because they're so shit at business, they fail. Yeah. Okay. So for me, one of the big elements in my course, especially, is actually the that business mental. module. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's such a big part, and it's where people lose it. You know, I, I had a girl come to me a couple of weeks ago that uh, she hasn't played ta tax in six years. Wow! Because that's going to catch up with you eventually. It's going to catch up with you, buddy. Okay, mm. so so there's certain things like that that people kind of you know, oh, I won't pay tax the first year because nobody will know. Well, yeah, sure, but then what happens when you want a home loan? Mm. You know, then the next part is, and and as you were sort of alluding to, where do people go? for that continued education. You know, I said before, 3.5% doing that. Uh, and from there, what we're actually looking at is these people are actually going out and seeking courses. The, you know, doing a strength and conditioning qualification, doing uh, a nutrition qualification, whatever it happens to be. But they, that's only a very small percentage. The other guys might be reading some stuff online, might be doing some, you know, social media, uh, you know, stuff. But I guess the, the other part of that is what is happening with the social media side is that there's there's always conflicting views. Okay, so the the concept around how to how to do a squat or whatever it happens to be, there's going to be guys that ha and girls that have very differing opinions. There, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for a young PT to determine which one's right and wrong. Yeah, you know, they they know what they know, and it's difficult in, in our industry to be told, "Oh, hang on, well, there's no black and white. There's a bit of grey in there, and there's a bit of blue in here, and whatever other colour you want to add there as well." You have to understand where that is. So mm -hmm. it's about are you going to go out and find a, a a good mentor and that's where the commercial gyms do well that's why they hold on to people better because most of those facilities have a pt manager or or someone there to guide the young PT and help them down that path. But that's also because it's beneficial for the PT manager. Whereas when you go out into the real world, so to speak, that's not there. So it's really up to the proactive guys to go and look for that. So, mate, how how are gyms being governed by governing bodies in relation to their programs with their PTs? Is there a body that looks after that? Okay. So I guess this is, uh, this is probably the hardest question that I can be asked. That's all I could think of at the moment. No, Sorry. That's, that's great. No, there isn't. Okay. Um, and that's what Fitness Australia are attempting to do. Now, the problem is, are they going to be able to get there? I don't know. I don't believe they can. With the the growth of things like CrossFit, you know, the Torian Pro was on here a, a, a while back and, uh, you know, I, I noticed that some of the lifts that were occurring, they, they're not textbook, but they're not textbook, but they're done by highly skilled and highly trained individuals. Yep. If you take that back to a commercial facility, try and do one of those particular lifts, a person's going to blow a shoulder, blow a knee, who knows what they're going to, what injury they're going to do. Yep. Problem is the, that it's going to be a tough road to get that all under the one banner. Do the gyms want that one banner? 
Look, or is it just Fitness Australia that wants it or yeah, is, it, look, is uh, it a handful of experts in the industry that are thinking we should do this or is it for the betterment of the, the public? Look, it's interesting. Uh, probably a bit over a year ago, I talked to, to Dr. Mack about this, you know, sitting up here on the Gold Coast and um, I said, you know, what do you think? And he said, I don't think they do. I don't think the gyms want to be governed. I think they want to be able to do their thing and, and get on with it. And I said, I, and I agree, but there should still be a minimum qualification or a minimum standard that is... is is, is, I guess, out there to make sure that people get the right thing. Are there any barriers to opening a gym? Almost none. None? Yeah, almost none. So you don't have to have any type of, there's no regulatory body, there's no governing insu- body? No, your insurance Just, is, is Are the you insurable one. or yep. not? Wow, well, that's interesting. Yeah. That explains why there's so many gyms. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, who's um who's leading the way when it comes to trainers in Australia that are really setting the pa- the pace for what a good PT is in Australia? You know, it's it's really funny. Um, I... I sat down with uh, with a guy a couple of weeks ago and we were chatting about who we think the top 10 trainers are in Sydney. And this is just Sydney-based for this discussion. I'll, I'll, I'll broaden, no, the, topic. Sydney. Sydney I'll broaden the topic. You're from Sydney. I'll broaden the topic. I get it. Sydney's, <clears throat> Sydney's king and Gold yeah. Coast is the poor sister. Yeah, exactly. I get it. So, look, I, I guess the, the thing for me is – there is almost no such thing because, and as I said before, it's it, it's about what you want to achieve. You know, like I love my Olympic lift, but I don't love CrossFit. I love, you know, doing some, you know, some running with Toddy and Trent Knox and, and whatever with the 440, but I'm a shit runner. So am I going to say that one of them is the best trainer or am I going to say that, you know, uh, you know, guys who are Olympic lifting coaches are the best trainer? No, I'm not because overall there's so many elements and so many things to achieve. You know, there's a, uh, there's the, the F forty five playoffs that occur every year occurred occurred a while back, and one of the things that uh, that I saw there is some of the best athletes are also gym owners or F forty five owners, I should mm-hmm. say. And one of the things that I, that struck me as a really big thing is some of them are great coaches, and others aren't great coaches, yeah. but are still able to run a good, successful business. So the point that I'm trying to make there is that I believe you choose what you want to achieve in this industry. You can do whatever you wish. You can be a gym owner and and just run the books and be the, the face behind the counter that keeps people happy. Or you can be the best athlete on the planet. It doesn't matter what you want to be. The, but the best part about this industry is that it's open to all people. And mate, do you think that, and that this just leads into a bit of a question for me, do you think a good PT has to look like a good PT? <laughs> Well, I certainly don't. So that's uh, that's I have to I have to answer this accordingly, don't I? You know, uh, I, I was chatting with uh, with Claire off air before as I arrived, and uh, and we were talking about a, a particular gym where uh, the the regulations to to uh, be a trainer there are sub five percent body fat. So I'll never be working there. Well, there could be a couple of issues with employment law around that, just quietly <laughs> too. Well, let's not worry about laws and regulations when it comes to owning a gym, do I? <laughs> so, that, but that's that's something that gets thrown across my desk a lot like oh that person doesn't look like a PT or do you should have a six pack if you're a PT no, let's talk about the education process yep. to be a PT yep all right so the 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 process is this as you go through the course there are certain elements that need to be ticked off as far as what physical fitness levels you need to to achieve this is also the same in the degree by the way so yep. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not pigeonholing that the cert three cert four is much worse than uh, than a, a degree in sports science at the a, moment a lot either. of people probably don't know this that you can get a degree in sports science but you can't actually train someone one on one you've got to go do a cert four that can be from 10 to absolutely what do you say 52, yeah, 52 weeks, weeks length. long yep so you got the degree on that side which you can't do anything with yeah you do the short course yep one on one yeah and it's really interesting uh, that I guess the amount of hours in front of people, let's say practicing or honing your craft to get that qualification done can be really minimal and certainly much less than, than you know, an accountancy degree or, or yeah. something along those lines. And I, I really think that everything needs to be improved there. I'm quite lucky at the moment. Trevor Clark at ACPE in Sydney uh, has, has asked myself and a group of other people to sit down and say, okay, well, here's our degree in sports science and exercise physiology two different degrees obviously how do we make sure these people are leaving our qualification with the skills necessary to train a client one-on-one because that's where a lot of them are ending up especially in those first years while they're trying to get their experience sounds like an elective into- module absolutely yeah because yeah. it's and- pretty much the same time I mean, what's a what's a uni 16 weeks what's that what's, what's a semester at uni? a semester yeah, yeah 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 so you so you're sort of looking at whether it's increasing the workload for for the entire degree 
to fit all of those things in or just adding little elements to each unit to make sure that's that's right. So that's going to be a really interesting game process. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that process. Do you think if something like that came into play, you'd eventually see the Cert 3 and Cert 4 phased out no, over time and it would be uh, part of a degree in the future? Look, I, I would like to see that it was. But the other thing that I would also like to see, and, and this is my... This is what I've proposed to Fitness Australia as, as my belief. The Cert 3, Cert 4 leads into the degree. Okay. So you do it first so you can go get a job, so you can help yourself make through money, uni, yep. make money, keep that that income happening, but also start getting that on-the-ground coaching experience. Lockie Wilmot and I had a conversation about the fact that some of the best coaches in the industry are Cert 3, Cert 4. Yep. Some of the smartest people in the industry are degree qualified. Yep. Sometimes those two don't line up. Yeah, exactly. You know, you can have this tremendously brilliant coach that couldn't make it through a uni degree. Yep. Or you can have the opposite, which is, you know, someone who's tremendously uh, qualified. Yeah, qualified and and can't coach for shit. Couldn't put two people in the same room. 100%. Yeah. It's an interesting play, isn't it? Yeah. And and look, I mean, do I know the exact answer to this? No. You know, I'm I'm treading through a minefield with trying to to help the industry get better and enjoy every minute of it at the same time, but but I'm learning on that each day. There's there's no there's no stopping in that area for me. There's there's plenty of things occurring to show me, "Oh, hang on, maybe we should add that. Oh, hang on, let's take that away and put that in at a different point in time." Yeah. Are there many uni talking about that or just look to my knowledge no i think uh this is this is the first time i've heard of it mm -hmm. um and i think it's tremendous didn't you need did a review of their course about three years ago and decided against it. yeah because most people walking out with those degrees under their belt end up working in like cardiology heart type stuff don't they yeah look i mean i, I guess the 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 big part of what they walk out of there with is that the degree itself gives you the qualification to do things how you get your foot in the door is really up to you cardiac rehab and those kind of areas whether it's uh in hospitals there's it's there's only a certain number of jobs yeah okay Interesting, isn't it? So, mate, a young person, male or female, wanting to get into the – not just a young person. Somebody wants to change their life, change yep. their career, wants to – goes, you know what, I've always wanted to train people, want to be PT. Let's talk about what courses are there. Look, I, I, I mean, I love the career change one. That's yep. a that's a big one for me too. Like, I really love seeing someone uh, following their passion. It doesn't matter whether they're 18 or uh, 85. Exactly. Okay? Yep. The courses that I really recommend for most people, I certainly think that everyone should do the, the simple courses. You know, get your Excel stuff up to date. Get your – understand you know your way around uh, around myob or whatever system you're going to use let's so let's park build that a as the, park can't that build as a the business without a business 100 percent. okay 100 yep. and then from there the the options available to you online are absolutely tremendous mm -hmm. you know there's is the nutrition style qualifications around precision nutrition issn those kind of areas yep. mac uni those those kind of options are absolutely amazing these are things that 20 years ago just didn't exist yep. okay because the online education portals just couldn't cope then after that the actual physical stuff you know there's there's some great stuff available in in all of the you know major cities in australia whether it be as i said before your asca qualifications your your which is your strength and conditioning level one two three going into the crossfit qualifications because there is a lot to learn in those that yep. are slightly different definitely the olympic weightlifting and uh power coaching qualification is another fantastic one and then probably the, the the you know then you start to move down the the pathway of individualized stuff where at this point I tell people what are you interested in are you interested in hypertrophy training okay well then go across to the clean health institute if yep. you're interested in let's say more of the biomechanical side of things maybe head down the Tony Bataji route there's a whole bunch of amazing courses that are available online and honestly social media is the easiest way to find those guys yeah you know just just follow someone that you already trust and and know follow what they're doing mm -hmm. have a look at it you know it's that uh it's that old adage of you know first they mirror you know and then they learn it so you know you you want to be in a position why where you're going down that to get those things done right and try and find out why those people have decided on that and then you make your own mind up whether you think that's the right way to go for you so mate is that all post getting my PT look you can or? you can start a lot of that at, almost immediately yep. especially in, especially the nutrition quality I certainly believe I, I mean I hate the nutrition side as as you are very well aware my my alignment with body science has always been guys tell me from a sports science perspective why this is the right way to yep. go and then I will run the research myself make sure that you know I'm comfortable with that and then and then I'll talk about it with my athlete I don't claim to be an expert in anything 
butt essence. Yep. That's that's what I, I make sure I, I put my hat on and, and really understand and go to work in that field. But the the concept for me is that if you if you're passionate about a particular thing, then run with it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't care whether you're keto, vegan, it doesn't bother me. Okay. That's your choice. Just make sure you're healthy. Yeah, it's all about that balance, isn't it? Hundred percent. I've got my S and C, my level one, level yep. two you're talking about. I've yep. got my PT. What's next? Is there anything after that as far as a pathway go for someone yeah. who's really driving forward in this industry? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I guess, you know, there's a couple of amazing examples out there at the moment of, of guys who have uh, who've come through the PT ranks, moved into full-time professional s and I And I really, obviously, that's my field of expertise, so I know these guys well. But, you know, I, I think, you know, looking at, at someone like Lockie Wilmot, who uh, has, has been at several different clubs and several different sports, came through the ranks as a junior PT, mm, okay. followed his passion, went yep. into AFL, moved out of AFL into rugby league. So, mate, just um, tapping out, last bits of advice for uh, anyone wanting to become a PT? Yeah, look, I, I guess uh, the biggest parts for me are choose your course wisely, make sure- How do you do that? <laughs> I, look, uh, keep talking to people. You know, I, I received a phone call, I was, I was in Hong Kong and received a phone call from a friend saying that her PT had said to her, just find the cheapest course and get it done as quickly as possible because they're all a piece of shit. And I just looked at it and I just went, well, that's exactly what the people who do our calls think of the industry. That's what's got to change. Yep. So the only advice that I have in that area is seek out the most in-depth course because the more education you can get, the better. You you don't have to believe all of it. I don't believe half of it. Like there's there's things there that I've trialed and changed and and you know, but it's the it's the set minimum standard there. You know, it's like a driver's license, right? You don't if you think you know here in Queensland you can do a a a U-turn at, at uh, you know a set of traffic lights. Okay, you can't do that in Sydney. Okay, it's just a slight variance of of that ruling. Okay, yep. so understanding that the rules are there for a reason. So the same same thing applies. The rules are there for a reason in PT. That minimum standard qualification is a must. So that's your big thing. If you want to be a PT, do your research. Hundred percent. What should I be looking for? I mean, obviously, we're all websites sing glory. Yeah, of course. I would actually start with talking to people, talking mm -hmm. to other PTs, yep. and don't take the opinion of one as gospel. Mm -hmm. Okay, because as I just said, you know, you you get someone that goes, all of them are a piece of shit. Just get the cheapest one. Yeah. Okay. Don't do that. No, okay. Talk to five or six people. Find out why they liked it and why they didn't. Yeah. So if I want to go the PT path to become more <coughs> able to coach and train later on yep. in life and maybe end up in an elite team, yep. What would my pathway look like? I think- And how you, long would it take? You would do your Cert 3, Cert 4 to start with. Yep. Then you would move into your exercise sports science degree. Yep. And then most definitely masters in whichever area you are passionate about, whether that be strength and conditioning, whether it be nutrition, whether it be physiotherapy, biomechanics, whatever it is. Yeah, okay. How long would that take? Yeah. How long is a piece of string? Yeah. Yeah. How much would it cost? Yeah. A lot. Because you're not helping. Not at all. No, no, no. That's, that's a long haul. Isn't it? <laughs> Look, it's a, it's a pretty serious industry when you get to that top end. So to do your ASCA level yep. one or two, do you have, what's what's the base qualification there? Uh, level one is a weekend course. And oh, so you don't have to be degree qualified no, to you go that? No, you don't have to be degree qualified. Can you do that before you become a PT as well? Yes, you can. Yep. I'm finding a lot of a lot of coaches uh, coming to me telling me they've already done their level one and before they actually go down the PT pathway because they're helping their mates, you know, coach a local footy team, do do some conditioning work there and whatever else and they've got they've got to get their registration qualification and insurance, I should say, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, again, I keep pushing those guys to still go and get their cert three, cert four, still think about degree. You know, it's it's essential to make our industry better that people are continuing that education cycle. So you said the level one was a weekend course? Yeah, level What's one level is a two? weekend course, but after the weekend course, you've got about 40 hours of work to get through mm -hmm. and about 60 hours of practical experience. Okay. The level two is two weekends and about double and double. Okay. So 80 hours of uh, work to be done, including having to write an article that's assessed and published in the Australian Strength and Conditioning Coaching Journal. So that's a that's a fairly daunting task work, yeah. for, for someone who's never written something 
going to be published. And then from there, there's about 100 hours of, of actual practical application that you've got to do with an already qualified coach to get through. Okay, so you'd probably best to do your Cert 4 <coughs> first, Look, get some I, of your I, basics under your belt. I, I like it when people have done their Cert 3, Cert 4 first. They get yep. their anatomy down, they get their physiology down, yep. just some of the simple stuff. Then get into your, okay. get into your specialization. Yeah. Exactly. And that's all it is, really. Yeah, nice. Hey, if uh, people want to follow you up on, well, what's what's the name of your um your provider of yeah. Cert 4s now? Yep. Um, so we've got uh, Pillar Education, which is uh, RTO that I decided that uh, I had to write. Originally, I just wanted to, uh, you know, muck around with a few modules and and help help the industry grow and then i realized that it, for me it was uh it was certainly about making that bigger so that's there um and then so that's called what pillar pillar education group pillar education group what's and the website there pillar.com.au and then we've got the course wade farmer and myself programming and periodization and uh, that's been going for a while now hasn't yeah that's going yep i i, I wrote the original places course. Everywhere, though, yeah right? yeah i wrote the original course about five years ago and then uh wade came in and made it pretty yeah added some really good content and can't be called Wait a pretty boy. Every time I call him a pretty boy, I love it. So, <laughs> and he's got the biomed background, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. So so yeah, he came in with a whole bunch of different different skill sets and, yeah. and knowledge points. And I mean I'd mentored Wade for about two years before that occurred. But yeah, the yeah stuff, he's big on the mentoring part, isn't he? Yeah, like huge. You, you both are and you've mentored together and yeah. you're presenting together. Yeah, and and look, I mean the skill set that uh, each one of us bring is very unique and very different. So what type of clients are you getting there? Uh, look, a, a lot of PTs. Okay. Uh, guys who are probably getting to that sort of third and fourth year in their PT cycle and going, okay, well, now I need to capitalize on income. I don't want to be working from five o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. How do, I, how do I make this better? What do I do with my social media? What do I do with, you know? Oh, so you're covering all angles of that too, are yeah. you? Nice. Yep. That's just, interesting. Just around authenticity. Yep. So that's the other part. You know, like a lot of the social media stats now are saying, yeah, sure, you can you can put as much content up as you want, but if you're if you're not showing that authenticity and that uh, and that unique selling point, you, you're just not going to achieve. Keep it real. Keep it real. What's that called? Programming periodization. We we how we do people find you? Uh, again, that's both on, on both of our Instagrams, uh, Wade Farmer um, and myself, Clint Hill. Plenty of uh, opportunities to go through that. We haven't even set up a website for that, and as I said, we're You're selling out everywhere. Yeah, we're yeah. still selling them out. Do you answer DMs if people DM you on this? Sometimes, thing? yeah. Fucking hopeless, eh? Hey? <laughs> Do you answer email? <laughs> no. <laughs> I get 400 a day, mate. Like, seriously. <laughs> 399 of them are shit. <laughs> and so, the other one's footy tips. <laughs> yeah, there's all types of crap on there. But okay, mate, so that's great. That's a great pathway. Like it, like you said, it's it's grey, isn't it? Like, do, oh, I, yeah. do I do this first? Do I do that first? Do I do the big course first? Do I need to do a degree? Do I not need to do a degree? It is tough, isn't it? Like it, yeah. it And it's going to be very hard for people like yourself and Fitness Australia to consolidate yeah. that into one And And I said concept. before, it's it's a minefield. It yeah. really is. You know, there, there's, you know, people are tiptoeing around everywhere. There's so many different organisations. And and we are trying to get everyone under the same banner, but it's going to take a long time. One of the good things happening is professional sport has now said degree and master's qualified, Correct. isn't it? Yeah, like if you don't yep. have that, you're not playing in that area. 100%. So I guess that gives people the option when they start to go, you know what, I'm going to need that degree at some stage. That. Yep. So that's going to take me four to five, what's a yeah. four to five years? Yep, four to five years. So I guess, you know, if it was six years and you put you got your cert four and you got Correct. a few certificates underneath that, you're probably a lot long way ahead of the person who qualifies. Yeah, you bet. So, you know, if you, if you look at that sensibly, if you finishing school around 18 by 25 you you could potentially be in that in playing in that domain but the the secret there is to and, and i shouldn't even say secret the truth there is you need to get yourself into one of those internships and and look there are plenty of people that say unpaid internships are, are bullshit and whatever else and and look i agree principally you know the asca are at the forefront of making sure people get paid for the work they do but when it's work experience and those kind of things as long as people yeah, aren't big being, difference between internships and Absolutely. A job. Yeah. You can't, you can't be doing though. 40 hours no. at an organization for free. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Can you be doing four or five? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting, mate. That's That's been a great little chat. I appreciate that. That's obviously something I'm going to take over to someone in my family and have a chat more about absolutely. too. Absolutely. We didn't touch on coaches and I'm not talking about elite sport coaches. I'm talking people in the fitness industry. Yep. Coaches. Are they going to join this group of consolidated? Look, I, 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 think, okay. I think what will occur there is that over the next few years, there will be a... a a way to get that done. Now, I don't I don't think it's going to be seamless and I certainly think there will be a rocky road on the way through it because at the moment, as I said, there's no need for the governing body to govern, mm. right? At the moment, they make their bit of cash. It's a privately run organization. Where you go. Yeah. They make more money out of Phylax than they do out of anything else. Okay, or fitness, the, the fitness, the yeah, Australian the 
Great show. Great show too. It is a great show. And look, and I mean, I, I Shawnee just- Shawnee still running that? Yep. Yep. And I was just down in Melbourne for that. And, you know, look, it was fantastic. It was, it was just great to see the number of people involved in our industry and, and just- Because a lot of people wouldn't know. There's a lot of continuing education going on behind oh, that, isn't amounts, there? Yeah. Huge amounts. You know, the-, yeah. the It's not just free protein shakes no, and free workouts. You know, everyone sort of, if, if you rocked up there on any day of the week, you wouldn't realize that there is actually almost a side stage going 24-7 mm. with continuing education. Yeah. So, yeah. It's good to see. Yeah. We might drop it on that one, mate. Thanks for coming in. I really Thanks appreciate much, that. Mate. It's really good for people to get a gauge on. And I'm just going through it at home with, with Taj, mate. It's like, what do I do? How do I do it? Do I yeah. go back to uni? Do I do this? And I'm sort of, he's had a gap year, so I'm just doing fucking something, Taj, hurry up. But <laughs> to me, it's it's really hard for these kids because, you know, if you talk at university level, let's get a uni yeah. degree. Yeah. You know, if you talk to someone at gym, they go, just get your cert four, mate. Hurry yeah, up. Hurry up. Yeah, yeah. And that's how you said that yeah. same conversation with people that you said, just do the quickest, easiest. There's the. The, uh, all of the courses have what's called a fire night. Yep. And what a fire night is, is all of the, let's say the fitness first, the visions, the blah, 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 they all get the opportunity to come in and, and do their uh, elevator pitch, you know? And why it's called a fire night, I'm not quite sure, but uh, maybe because it's a fire sale. Um, and that's kind of what it feels like too, you know? You come and work for us because we're better than the rest and blah, blah, blah. And look, you know, I, I really, I, I feel for the guys going through these courses mm. at the moment because the guidance isn't individualized. The guidance is, here's a blanket approach have a crack. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I guess that's where you surround yourself with mentors when you get in. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yep. Well, mate, that was good. Thanks heaps. Uh, get you back up again soon. We might do a recovery one with you next time because yeah, that's be great. an area that you're known for and I want to pick your brains in that area. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Thanks, mate. Chat soon. Today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.